Hi there guys, welcome back and hello if you are new um, and hello to our new star of the show here which is Rupert. Um, you guys probably haven't actually seen Rupert because normally he is trying to destroy all of my records um, but for once he's actually sitting down quite nicely. So after 2021's Aphelion, the progressive luminaries that are leprous are returning with their brand new album Melodies of Atonement. So if you're not familiar with Leprous, they're a band that have been kind of quietly making a name for themselves since 2001 when they formed. They're characterised by tricky time signatures, incredible technique and absolutely amazing melodies. So on their previous album, Aphelion, the band were kind of experimenting with the idea of orchestral moments, you know, kind of having more of an ostentatious sound, I guess. But for me, Melodies of Atonement, I think the biggest difference is that it's very much a return to kind of a core band sound. However, the thing is with, you know, Aphelion and experimenting with these softer ideas, orchestral moments, that doesn't mean that the band have forgotten how to be heavy. With that in mind, I think there's more of a return to that sort of idea that we had on uh, Congregation, even a hint of like Bilateral and some of Melina. But that's kind of the beauty, I think, of a Leprous record is you never really kind of know what you're going to get. Like a Sunken Ship is a great example of that. You know, the sort of screaming that's in there from Einar Solberg and then the sort of down-tuned guitars, really quite distortion heavy. That's kind of like one of the main things. I also think it's more of a kind of modern sounding record. You know, Silently Walking Alone, I think has an introduction of sort of synths, keys. It takes a night. I have tried to... And much like the album's kind of challenger deep, you know, bottom of the ocean style um, artwork, there's a lot of space here. Atonement and My Spectre are great examples of that. And then you've also got the kind of embryonic limbo, which I really, really loved. And that... Oh. And the guitar also kind of punctuates at the same time as Einar's vocals, which, speaking of, holy moly, this guy just gets, he's like a fine wine, he just gets better with age. And I think with the previous records, he's been able to explore those sort of subtleties a little bit more, whereas now we've really got that sort of balance of power, but also those kind of dynamics that he's really, really great at. And there are some moments on this album, like I Hear the Sirens, to really not allow Einar to hide behind anything. And that's just how good of a singer he is. The time when the band really shines through, though, is when things all come together. And I think one of the best moments is Unfree My Soul. You know, we've kind of had all of this sort of build up on the record and then it kind of happens at this climactic final track, create that m massive larger than life leprous sound. And rhythm has always been very key, I think, to Leprous. And Bard Kolstadt, um, his drumming is just absolutely fantastic. There's almost like a playfulness to his playing. Um, you know, there's kind of ghost notes that he incorporates on Silently Walking Alone or the, the sort of cowbell that appears at times on Like a Sunken Ship, I think it is. All of the talk of subtleties as well, you know, it has to be said the production on this record is fantastic. David Castillo was the producer. Then you had Adam Noble as a uh, mixing engineer and uh, Robin Schmidt as mastering as well. And it's especially great, you know, when you're looking at different textures. For example, Faceless sounds like almost a jazz band. But it's also great because it shows how the band can morph from this heavily distorted entity to something which is, you know, really kind of like organic sounding and, you know, that brings elements of jazz into it. For me, Melodies of Atonement, I think, is made for the ardent Leprous fan. It nods back to the era of Congregation and Melina, but in doing so, bears in mind all the work that was put in for Pitfalls, Aphelion, and then kind of breaks some new ground at the same time. There's a lot more kind of deep cuts, I feel like, on this record, but it very much kind of rewards that patience and that tenacity to really get to know it. 
I'm sure that it'll open the door even wider for Leprous and still proves that they are, I think, one of the most exciting modern progressive music style bands there are out there. So for me, I think I'm feeling an 8.5 out of 10. It wasn't kind of, you know, a masterpiece that's gonna blow me away every time, but there are some absolutely great, great songs on here. And it's great to see Leprous kind of, you know, continuously exploring and expanding. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon for another album review. Take care, my friends.